Yo, so the opinions and views expressed on this podcast are that of our own and the future Bachelor podcast only and not affiliated with any outside party or entity or anything like that. This fun podcast, though, may include some adult language. Future Bachelor Podcast. Yes, y'all. Welcome to Future Bachelor. My name is Sai. I'm Veronica. And this is episode 97. <laughs> Ever closer. Ever close to that 100. 100. Um, you know, we had to start off with a little with a little vibe for uh, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, and everyone that passed um, this past weekend. It's kind of like a crazy moment, like events. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of things happen in pop culture all the time and stuff, but like, um, you know, this is a cultural event, you know, like mm-hmm. when, when somebody of this stature and this talent and stuff um and respected um you know uh passes away and then you know his daughter as well and all the people you know what was it eight nine people in the plane yeah like with a couple other girls his daughter's age yeah so um you know we i'm sure everyone's heard everything under the sun um over the last couple days about the kobe stuff um i mean i don't really want to talk too much on it do you have like any thoughts or anything you know um, how do you how 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 did you feel when you first heard the news? Um, I think I was I mean, I was definitely stunned. Obviously, like I'm not a huge I actually I grew up going to basketball games every year for my birthday. Mm-hmm. I went to Chicago Bulls games every year for my birthday up until I was probably about 13 or 14. Mm-hmm. Um, so like basketball in that sense was always like a part and I went with my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, that was like my birthday present from him. And so I think in that sense, like it kind of hit me in this weird way where I was like, I don't even know. I couldn't even imagine like what it's like when they were, when they were going down. Mm -hmm. Um, To me, I think that's like the hardest thing is like, you know, they were just going to go play some basketball. Yeah. Um, And they had plans for the rest of the day. They had things going on. And I think that's what's, kind of tough like that's like when I've gotten sad about it that's like kind of what I get more sad about I get sad about those girls who were thir- like I mean Kobe was only 41 so like that's really young and then I think about the girls who were only 13 mm-hmm. um and that's just like they you know they never expected to die um and I guess like for me I just think it brings into question like this whole idea of like del- like you said someone of that stature like some people are going to feel some kind of way about it. Like, some people are going to be more devastated than others. I don't really think anybody has any sort of right to police how you can feel about it. But mm-hmm. also, I think it comes into the question of, like, you know, celebrities have a, are as complicated as, like, normal people are. Like, I mean, Kobe wasn't all great. He was mm-hmm. a rapist. And, um, but he had a lot of other great accomplishments and he did a lot of other great things. So it's just like, well, I want to say like allegedly, I mean, I don't know if any of that stuff, like it was proven in court or anything. Like, I don't want to say well, yeah, one but, way or another, you know, I'm not really sure of all that story and stuff, but I knew for a fact that he wasn't convicted of being anything. So, you know, um, just cause you're convicted doesn't mean that it's not. Yeah. But we have to true. say allegedly, but yeah, there's but no allegedly, but there, yeah, I mean like he was, yeah, he was let off for different charges. Um, but I just think it's complicated because, like, I think people deal with grief in a lot of different ways. And when you're someone of that stature, some people are going to, like, either you're going to, you know, deal with it different ways, deal with it other ways. And I think what's really disgusting that I've seen a lot of lately on social media is that people have been, you know, using the hashtag that they've been using a lot for his death, like, called 24 ever because mm-hmm. of his one of his main numbers, 24. Um to like you know because it's a major hashtag right now they've been adding it to like their different influencer posts or different things like that Mm -hmm. and i think you know that's gross to capitalize on a moment like this no matter what you feel about kobe um so that's yeah i honestly like it's um i try to stay away from even commenting on it like on social media and stuff yeah it's very shocking and all that stuff but it's just like you know, um, yeah, I have to practice what I preach. Like there's like a huge thing. Like, um, I mean, if there's a moment, if like, you know, if he really did, I know he, he really changed a lot of people's lives. Like, you know, like like he's our generation specifically legit grew up. Like Kobe was like a kid when he started like basketball in the league and stuff. I mean, like how many people have like thrown a shot, like, 
you know, like trash or whatever and said Kobe Mm -hmm. or whatever. Like that's definitely all him. I mean, the entire the academy that his his daughter and those girls play basketball at is something he created. Mm -hmm. Like he's done so much and like he's done a lot for women in sports, for men in sports, for people like it's been crazy seeing all the different celebrities who have different connections to him like the jimmy fallon's and the jimmy kimmel's like jimmy fallon met him back when they first got to la Mm -hmm. when they were like kids and stuff so it's just like kind of crazy to see like how yeah he's more than just a basketball player yeah i um i definitely think like you know uh you know you just take these moments and you just kind of like i mean this is something i talk about all the time but like you know um more i i have more personal things like than than a basketball star passing away that make me realize that life is short you know mm-hmm. i mean let it be a reminder and stuff but it really surprises me how much people really don't even value life until someone like kobe bryant passes away and then you want to be like yeah life you know coming home to your family it's like has has anyone not gone through like actual life things like kobe never paid your bills or anything like that like why is this a moment where like people want to like you know, I'll preach it all day long. Like, you got to love your family, love your friends, like, appreciate life every day. Like, that's yeah. that's just how it is. Um, you know, I just, it just surprises me how many people, like, actually get woke in a moment like this. It's like. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's where it gets complicated. And it's like, how can we grieve police? Can we not? Like, when is it, like, okay with, like, what people are you saying or doing in these kinds of moments? Yeah. So, you know, I guess everyone will. Um, like you said, uh, react to it differently and stuff, but just kind of wanted to get that stuff out the way, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I know he, he definitely meant a lot to a generation of people, like, you know, as far as like, you know, how big sports is and stuff like, mm-hmm. you know, so whether you were a Lakers fan or not, like you can't deny like what he's done for the game and, um, and what was, he was able to accomplish, you know, um, at a very young age and he's lived like longer lives in his 41 years and a lot of us I probably agree, will yeah. our whole life so um so yeah we'll uh move on uh how has everything been v how was your last week i mean we saw each other a lot yes we did yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we both celebrated uh your your friend mm. our friend mm-hmm. but he was your friend obviously first yes paul's birthday yeah with some paintball yeah that was um i'm still got some bruises that I are healing all over my body i got shot in the face <laughs> yeah like that like kind but of you can barely see it anymore yeah it was just like really bummy because it was like it, I, I it was like me and paul were going hard so we like won the game but like right yeah. when we won the game some like asshole like with a high powered one just like turned around and shot me right in the face and i'm just like dude what the hell like it, and i'm wearing know. a mask but it has like the breathing area for your mouth so the pieces and it's a cold day the pieces just went right through it and got like my mouth and stuff so just like i hate when you know when you get like pimples or anything around your mouth yeah. you just like damn it like people are just gonna be like he's got the herp or something like that <laughs> so that was like what i was like pissed off about like you know um get you know, Paul wants to go and do these crazy paintball and excursions and stuff. And it's just like, dude, like my face means so much to me, dude. Like I gotta be careful. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you Jesus. know, that's how much I love him. You can't help my vanity. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I love him so much. I put my face at risk and, um, it was what we paid. And it's um, paid the price, paid but the Hey, price. you look fine. So don't worry Thank about Thank you. It. I appreciate that. Buddy. Um, and then also that same day I had my friend Amy's birthday party. She, mm-hmm. for the past three years have been going to Porter, which is actually right around the corner from uh, where we record Mm -hmm. um and so i did that went out to edge with hood with her and some friends um then i ended up i ended up coming back to paul's yeah you had like a sleepover with the boys yeah (laughs) um classic yeah i barely remember that part but i know we ended up going we we started off like a pregame at paul's which is like turned into just like a regular party we almost didn't want to leave and then i was just like in the mood to dance so we convinced everyone to go to mjq Mm -hmm. where we could dance which i had been the night prior with sims shout out to sims yeah um so you know i straight up like had a great saturday all around with uh it was it was so and he was still here he just left today um yeah. for colorado but he'd been with me for like two and a half weeks. two and a half weeks yeah so um it was cool to be able to show him like he was like leaving today just thanking me for everything thanking everybody like you and everybody that we did things with over the he's like i don't know if it's like this all the time here with like you and your friends but you guys like le- legit like live it up and i'm like you're like yeah. well it's been a little bit heightened because of like i don't both think it like, has like legit but, like, every weekend there's some party or somebody's yeah, like thing we have to celebrate stuff, like yeah. you know i'm it doesn't stop like i don't know where the end stops for me here like every yeah. weekend or something i 
I want to get back to like making music and stuff. But someone's like, I was born this day and I have to go. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I was like, you know, it was kind of cool to be able to see someone else come in and for two weeks and see like how we live and not just the partying, but like our work ethic. Like, yeah, you know, he, he commented on doing the, this stuff. the live watches, the po- podcasts, like, you know, all this different stuff that we do. And, yeah. you know, that was what I was like worried about. I've never had a guest stay with me for that amount of time because, you know, I got a nice place, but it's not really made for um, extended stay. Yeah. Um, but it worked. And, uh, you know, I was concerned about being able to get all of our stuff done, like around another person being here. And um, but at least you guys have like such a long term friendship that it's not like I feel like I have friends that I've had for that long. Where, like, if similar things, like, they'd be like, oh, yeah, if you got to go do that, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was pretty much the the only thing I told them that, you know, I'm like, I got some things I got to do throughout the week. And yeah. as long as you can. Nudge, nudge, yeah. wink, wink. <laughs> I mean, he would, he would, like, you know, find a coffee shop to go to or whatever like that. And it works. So, um. But yeah, so it's been it's been a fun week. Um, you know, we we definitely lived it up. Um, I still feel like it's it's we're 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 going on a high since your birthday still. So I know um, I can't complain. Yeah, how's twenty six been treating you so far? Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. You know, it's been... you getting out there. Yeah. Yeah. Getting out there. That's what's up. <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a flight away from that, <laughs> and maybe the crickets. <laughs> Since you didn't want to talk about it, I could sense. But um, well, I mean, maybe maybe another time. It's maybe. just like a, there's a different ears that might be listening. No, oh, okay, okay. Um, um, well, we uh, we do like the ears to listen. So, yeah, we do. Um, I know. <laughs> you know, uh, we definitely talked about you know the Kobe Bryant thing again. Like you know, you were talking about it going down. I you know, like the picture, it, like it happened really fast. Like everyone just kind of hit that thing, and it's just like you know that's the way I'm gonna like kind of think about it because. You know, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to, but uh, something that actually interesting that happened is that like, I, I, you know, was recently like had gone out on a date with a girl and, um, she really just likes stop clicking. All right, <laughs> shut up. You make me lose my train of thought. Um, just type it next time. Um, so, uh, you went on a date with a girl and she really likes Dolly Parton. So she like went in and told me like the whole Dolly Parton story, like, in a way that like it felt like I was watching a biopic. She was so into it, and then I love that. and a week later, this Dolly Parton challenge like happens out of nowhere, and I really don't. It's like such a random thing. I kind of don't. So like, even if Dolly Parton did it, like why would a whole bunch of people be like? So like I don't. So like Dolly Parton, who like is an icon, and right now she's got a lot of a lot of stuff. Like there's a podcast out about her. I think she's got a Netflix thing coming out. Mm-hmm. There's just a bunch of different stuff happening with her. Also, it was just her birthday. She's Capricorn as well. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> I get to it. <laughs> um, but she posted to Instagram, which re- like reminder, she's 74. So but she's still obviously like hip to the hip to the fun stuff. Mm. She posted this thing to Instagram that said, get you one who can do it all winky face. And it has which now everyone should know this. It's a little like quad of photos and it says LinkedIn more professional photo facebook a kind of more family friendly photo instagram it's like an old stunting photo yeah it's kind of like a and then tinder is her in her um in her playboy bunny outfit Mm -hmm. and so everyone has taken this by storm and like even brands have been doing it i've been seeing colleges do like examples or just different things of like you know like how do you present yourself in these? So how did you forms? feel about? It? I don't. I don't feel like you did it. I didn't. I kind of considered doing it, but I, I, I'll I, be honest. I mean, on like dating apps, my pictures are like, my pictures are on my Instagram. So yeah. like, to me, I was like, you know, there's some challenges that are like creative, but like, I don't know, man. There's something about some of these challenges. Sometimes you just see people doing them, and you're I just mean, like, wow. I just I you think, are so corny. The whole best one to do was Chris D'Elia. He had all four of them, like you know, Tinder, yeah. Facebook, and he was just like. Like, it was just, like, this confused face with question marks for each of them. It was just like, <laughs> why? Why are you doing it? Like, you know? Um, but whatever. People get bored and don't know what else to post, so they'll just copy some challenge. But, um, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was very interesting um, that it was even Dolly Parton. I was just like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the Grammys were this past week, too, the, the same day as, um, you know, Kobe's passing. Yeah, so, so and in Staples Center, yep. which is where he played with mm-hmm. the Lakers. Um, so, you know, that was a whole, a whole thing. A lot of artists uh, had, like, his um, – had his jersey and their different sets and things and they did a whole they actually sang boys men alicia keys did yeah um for you know his did they sing that song um because that's kind of like their 
That's, that song, I think, I was... I think it might have been that song. Right. It had Goodbye in the title. I forget. Yeah, no, that definitely was that one. That's, like, their song. Um, I think, like, you know, that was a cover that they did, um, an acapella cover of a song that was done, like, in the 60s for this movie called Cooley High. And then Boys and Men comes out in, like, the early 90s, and their album's called Cooley High Harmony, based off that movie. Oh, cool. And they did that cover, and it ended up actually doing charting really well um michael jackson was like the biggest artist at the time so it was really hard for anyone to break through to number one but um specifically that song um, look at these fun facts guys i know what the hell um but yeah that, <laughs> i know i'm like whoa and yeah. like i feel like i'm reading the back of like a trivial pursuit <laughs> card right now <laughs> but real life uh, we're still no, I like that kind fun of facts stuff. about the 90s we thought we we're doing it this season but um but yeah no um so yeah I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the song they sang i'm pretty sure it was actually yeah um so <laughs> Grammys. Um, Billie Eilish mm-hmm. swept the four big, the big four. So, best new artist, song of the year, record of the year, and the difference between those is like song. I think is like more based on like writers, mm-hmm. and record is more based on like artists and stuff. I, don't, I really, I every year I say that I'm gonna remember what the difference is, and every year I forget. Yeah, it's like, dude, but they're it, not even called records anymore. Like, come on. But and then and album of the year, and she also got um best pop vocal album okay. album as well and so a lot of these like she shared awards with and like producer went to her brother phineas um things like that so she i mean she starts and she i think she's the youngest artist to sweep wow. get all of those yeah and that was not even it didn't stop there like she got i think another one too mm-hmm. so so she's i mean she's like she was definitely very humble and she was definitely like astounded like when she got um best album she was like this should go to ariana and ariana was like in the front being like no no but you know scooter Braun's like no bitch you wanted that <laughs> yeah well at least ariana didn't have to beg for it like selena gomez but um i mean yeah no but. It, uh but yeah so uh that's what's up um i did see like tyler creator did like a speech after um he accepted his he had won an award for best i think rap album or something rap. Like that. and so like he like that was kind of a whole thing of contention because he didn't really think his album belonged in rap which like i would think anybody who's really listened to igor would be like yeah it's not really rap mm-hmm. per se um and that kind of like talks to the whole there's there's a lot of like, issues and controversy surrounding the grammys in general because of different um cases that were being put against like the acad like whatever their academy is called the board the board and Mm -hmm. things like that because of either they were thinking of different things with lack of diversity or like saying that different things were rigged um and stuff like that and so like this kind of was looped into some of this because it was like oh are we just because he's black and like because he has rapped are we just tossing him in rap and not putting him with pop because like whatever um so that was like a whole thing but on the funnier side of it uh, he retweeted a tweet that he had favorited from nine years ago when someone said um, that he wasn't going to win the Grammy because he had tweeted something. Yeah, you'd probably nominate it. And yeah. He's like, don't worry, you won't win. Yeah, he's like, don't worry, you won't win. And he's like, I'm petty F. Like, have a good day, Mark. I yeah, won. I'm, I'm petty as hell. I saved this tweet from nine years ago just for when I do win. I'm going to immediately tweet this to you. And and Mark was like, congrats. <laughs> so, um, you did it. Yeah, I mean, I, I get where he's coming from um, because it's, it, you know, his speech was like being like, you know, I feel like you guys use the word urban like it's the N word. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't like that word. And also, you know, you know, throwing me this award and best rap album, like why can't it just be best like album or another genre um it's like throwing you know a little kid your annoying cousin that wants to play video games with you and like pl- pass him an unplugged in controller and just so he can like, like shut pretend, up yeah yeah and you know and then he has mm. said he's he did say mm. on the other hand i'm also very appreciative of this because it's like you know um it's just cool to be recognized too so it's like yeah it's like one of those things it's like a great thing to say i think when you win to like state how you feel about it um to make but a also difference like, but you gotta also like be like yeah but i won thanks yeah i mean it's like but i did win so thanks i guess but um i do think it should be up to like the artist like you know however he posted his album to like spotify and distribution like platforms yeah and like stuff. yeah what heat category he should yeah, be if under if he ca- categorized it as pop then that should go under pop but i'm just saying though 
it would be interesting if he did go under pop and like you know for him to beat out Ariana Grande or Billie Eilish or Billie and Eilish. stuff. It that would, would be, be kind of crazy. But I do think like Billie Eilish makes very similar creepy like you know That's, pop I mean, music. You know? Similar, honestly, yeah. But she's just a cute white girl. Yeah, and if Ariana Grande has like three verses on her album like with hip hop or like someone rapping on it, it's or still something pop. Like that. Yeah, I mean. So yeah, I I think his argument's very valid. It's yeah. like it's just like okay, he's a black guy. Mm-hmm. They don't want to put him in that like because he's a black he's a weird weird i'm using air quotes but like weird in the sense of like he's not like a you know conventionally attractive even though like billy has really made her thing about like wearing the big oversized clothes and whatever Mm -hmm. but like if you look she's beautiful like she's a beautiful beautiful girl for sure but that's like the reason is that she purposely dresses that way because she never wanted it to be about like look at my sex appeal yeah but i still think she's still making it about look at like how i look though like you know what i'm saying i get what you're saying yeah and also um you know uh when it comes to like tyler the creator um i think there's other I think he was also saying like there's actual albums that categorize themselves as rap that I think are better rap albums than mine because mine is not even it's like you know the fact that you're even putting me in a box is like weird Grammys like you know that's I think what yeah. essentially was saying is yeah. like I don't even say that I'm a rapper this is a rap album so how are you to like put your you know um, and and you know this is something I thought about for a while like I feel like it's weird that there's genres anyways genres are kind of very restraint restraining to an artist these days because yeah. if I want to rap on a, one of my songs that I create that doesn't mean that I necessarily want to be a rapper like you know yeah. I just want to be a popular artist it's- and I just do multiple things now like you know mm-hmm. it's like what Lizzo um, you know she wants to be considered a rapper but like it's not like her album is going to go under best rap album or something like that yeah, right so yeah. it's it's just really weird Um, how they do it especially but. because like genre bending and like you know melding and things like that are just so of the now because there's you know there's no way to just be one genre just because of how music and everything has evolved like everything um, is like fed into each other if, like yeah if we went back like you know like 20 some or even like or like you know or like Halsey like what she's doing right now like she's doing like like I mean she we talked about it before but she's like why am I pop I want to be like make an alternative song now she's making country I think she's trying too hard on trying to like genre bend and stuff like that because it's like at this point like to do like the country thing it's kind of like you know little Nas X just did that shit and it's not like um I don't know. Like it was, she was just adding to the yeehaw agenda a little right. bit late. But. but speaking of Lil Nas X, like he won a Grammy, which is pretty crazy. He did. Best pop duo. Yeah. Uh, or was best it? whatever I, I duo. Th- I thought it had to do with his music video, but maybe. And then I think he got something for a music video, but wow. I think they also got duo. Well, I mean, good for him, dude. Like that shows you one song can like make you. Like, that, that's kind of weird, though. It's just kind of weird that you can make a song and then get a Grammy like and then just never be relevant again. But the performance I thought was pretty interesting. Like We'll it, see how long his staying power is. Well, I mean, I mean he's he, a, he's a kid of the internet. He's yeah. been on the internet. He's like made, you know. Panini I guess like did a little bit and stuff, but mm-hmm. like we'll see what else what else happens. But the performance was pretty interesting. They had like a rotating stage mm-hmm. with like four sets and you know, he came out doing a song and because, then he did a bunch of his remixes. Yeah. BTS was on the next one and then he had um what's his name? Diplo. That, uh Diplo and Homeboy. And Mason Ramsey. Mason Ramsey and, and then brought um, out Billy Ray. Then he brought out Billy Ray, but what was even like gave me shivers was when Nas came out. Yeah. He said Big Nas and Little Nas. I was like, "Damn, dude, this is a really well thought out performance." Like, yeah. if you're if you're gonna do that, like that was perfectly done. Like, you know, I, I thought agree. it had everybody in it, and you could tell he was having a blast. Yeah, like I think that that's, at the end he came out like like uh, Neo in the Matrix and stuff. I feel like crazy. that's what's important to me. Like, you could tell he was having a blast. You could tell like Lizzo was having a blast. Like Ariana is like I saw Ariana in concert, and I seen like. I see the work that goes into her shows. Mm-hmm. I feel like she did not give it for her performance really? at the Grammys. Wow. Yeah, like it just seemed like she you was You think kinda, she already knew she wasn't going to win a Grammy? I think she was just phoning it in. I mean, like I think it's kind of like the end of this. I think she's going to be putting out new music okay. soonish. And so I think this was like the end of the era of like her performing. Thank you, next stuff. Thank you, next yeah. stuff. And so I think she just kind of phoned it in a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I was like... Okay, but yeah, she did she's like probably tired of it. Her little thing at the end was like she put like you know she put like an engagement ring back in its box for like the whole end of the thank you next like and I was like damn really you're still like 
going to shove that down Pete Davidson's throat. Yeah, I know. Especially now that he doesn't have Kaya Gerber on his arm anymore. Like, damn. Mm-hmm. Can't catch a break. Yeah, I know. Like, chill the hell out, girl. Um, <laughs> like, that was like years ago. You already ago. lost one, like, X and shit. So, um, speak, uh, speaking of more performances, though, did you did you catch how uh, your homie uh, Nick Jonas had food in he his teeth? He had shit in his teeth, yeah. And he, like, tweeted about it or something. He's like, at least you guys know I eat my greens. It's disgusting. <laughs> Dude, you didn't look I in the mirror and like, smile before did, you go out to perform at the Grammys? How did someone not grab that? Like, how did, like, any of the people, like... He obviously know, doesn't smile before he performs he at anybody very, around he him. He is a closed mouth smiler, yeah, so... He's a mm-hmm. smolder. Yeah, he well, is. Too bad he can't sing with his mouth closed because that was disgusting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He has, his brothers are like yes, <laughs> especially because well he's like the like kind of lead singer now that would be a real yeah. that'd be they're like uh, Nick. <laughs> Do you think Priyanka is gonna divorce him now? I'm uh, just joking. She loves. She is obsessed. Like crazy. Um, it still doesn't look like right to me. It just looks like some older woman is like toting around like her like <laughs> little nephew or something. I don't know. But um, anyways, uh, what else we got? So, um, a couple, couple stories out of Bachelor Nation. Mm-hmm. So this broke, I think, late last week, probably right as this up epi- the last week's episode came out. Yeah. Um, that Tyler G from Hannah B season, yeah. he was like, he got the first one-on-one date, and he ended up leaving unexpectedly like he just like left on like probably episode three which people said it has to do with a lot of different things with stuff on the internet that came out about some of his prior behaviors blah 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 blah. whatever he left just kind of like woof Mm -hmm. so to avoid all that i'm guessing but he died at age 29 this past uh like last week of an apparent um drug overdose in florida yeah i remember he was like the jack jared yes yes guy Exactly. Um, so, yeah, that was sad. They're all, you know, mourning that. Mm-hmm. And then. Why does that feel like so long ago? It was because cause it, it feels long ago because like it literally, I think, happened like as the episode last week's episode came out. Mm. So, like, it feels long for us. Cause no, I mean, like like him, like being on the show. Oh, like, well, I remember he had like the first like one on one and he kind of killed it. And then the next episode, he was just not was, on like, the show gone. anymore. No explanation. Like Yeah. They, I feel like it does. I just, I feel like all of a sudden, all these seasons of The Bachelor, Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise start like running into each other in my brain. I have to like really work hard to be like, how, how are these ordered? Right. Like I'll remember all the main people, but I'll be like, I don't know which one was before that one. Right. It goes fast too, as much as it drags on. But, but as much as it drags, it goes. What else we got for Bachelor news? This, this one I'm excited about. Okay. <laughs> and this one, my aunt called it. Grocery store Joe. And Kendall are donezo. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. Really? Because he's moving back to Chicago. He's moving back to Melrose Park. He's going to be down the street from my aunt. He's going to be down the street from my friend Natalie. What does it have to do with the breakup, though? <laughs> I'm just saying. Why? <laughs> the breakup is <laughs> is that I could have a chance. I just need to fly back to Chicago. What happened? Well, let's Win his the... heart. He'll fit in perfectly at my <laughs> Christmas Eve dinner. <laughs> it will be perfect. We could go sit at a bruises. We could have some drinks. It will be great. A bruises? A bruises. Rosie's, um, that's a very, that's a very niche thing. Most people won't get that. That's insular. I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, so I guess they both, like, they did a, a joint post, both of them posted today or whatever, because this happened. We're breaking this news. If you didn't know, now you know. Wow. Um, but they posted about it just saying that, you know, they've, they want to, they want to spend their time apart now. They want to, like, they respect each, they respect and love each other a lot, but, it just like I think I think they're getting no TV time. That's I what's think, happening. And yeah, I mean, and he moved to L.A. for her mm-hmm. and I think for potential opportunities. And I think it just wasn't really jiving. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think he was like, yeah, I'm going to go back. He did Dancing with the Stars, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you suck. Honestly, though, like, you know, it's it's as cool as Kendall might seem and nice and stuff. Like, I don't ever forget, like, how you treated him. On oh, Bachelor yeah. in Paradise. I mean, yeah. And like, like she didn't deserve him to get. get no. Her back. And then his, his mom didn't. He's like, stop making out with my girlfriend. Like, yeah. you know, I remember saying that about I her. remember that. And like um, the tea from my aunt, who's very close with Joe's mom. Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> like, no, like this is like they literally live down the street. Okay. Um, well, then I guess you're doing the next um, road trip <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> 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 hey. <laughs> What's up, Joe? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess, you know, she didn't really. His mom didn't really like Kendall. 
So yeah. that was my aunt was like, oh, it won't last. And then like I texted her today. I'm like, did you see the news? She's like, yeah. <laughs> I She's like, it. I told you. <laughs> I was like, oh. Wow. All right. Well, um, what do you do? What made you go yikes this week? All right. I've got like one more serious yikes and then one just sort of cringy. yikes. Okay. So serious yikes ish. So we talked about it on the show before with the whole America's Got Talent thing mm-hmm. with um, why Gabrielle Union left because of. Um, just like how the show she felt was, like there was like discrimination. Yeah. And how the show her. is treating her and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, and so um, Terry Cruz, who also is like a fellow host person on the show, he um, was he didn't really support her in her decision. He said how the show He's like, I don't get what she's saying. Like, I've always been treated well. It was pretty blatant. Like, I saw I saw a video clip of him being like, no, that's not anything I've ever experienced. America's Got Talent is diverse. They yeah. have, like, they like this people. They like yeah. this people and blah, blah, blah. Like, not even gave her, like, a shred of, like, you might have felt something, you yeah. know? So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, yikes. Holy crap, man. And because, um, you know, we, this is a conversation we had, I think, within the last year on the podcast about Terry Crews, um, you know, being a male and coming out with the Me Too movement mm-hmm. saying he, you know, had um, been uh, sexually assaulted in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, so it's like I think Gabrielle Union had came out and, you know, stood by him during that and support. She did. And for him to not even like they weren't even supposed to be speaking on this project or on this um, project um, on this uh, subject because, um because it's it's actually she's got a case against you yeah. know I think ABC or NBC I think ABC it's NBC. Um, but uh, yeah so it's just very like it's like dude well, like you should have just stayed out of it why do you always have to inject yourself into everything and also like and then the way he then continued to interject himself was saying like he's like you know there's only one woman on earth I have to please her name is Rebecca and then he went into this whole thing being uh, on his wife and he's like not my mother not my sister my daughters or co-workers I'll let their husbands boyfriends and partners take care of them like what the heck which like, like I feel like to me like that is like a, even a bigger yikes because it's like okay like are you saying that like you especially like in the black community you can't stand it's such for a your stupid sisters. thing to say like you can't like it, like even like honestly like him supporting her could ju- him have just just like not saying anything it could have been him just being all like you know like i like that's that was her experience like that's her experience like i'm gonna let her speak on her experience like he yeah. could have done so many other ways yeah inst- like we'll see like you know what ends up happening yeah like, like he didn't that. need to do that and but also, even like- that that statement it's like all right so i only have to care about my wife i don't need to care about my daughters or mothers or anybody yeah and then say like I'll let their husbands and blah, 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 like do like those are two separate things you're saying. First of all, you're saying that you only care about like what your wife says. And then you have to end it with saying that you're going to let like men like uh, control like th- these other women that yeah. should be important to you in your yeah. life. Like I think that's like that's what's like really effed up to me. I'm like, OK, so are you saying that like all women need some man to like right. th- to like then take care of these situations so, and like if you don't belong to like a certain man like you're shit out of luck yeah like, he's really uh put himself um with a f- with his foot in his mouth and backed himself in a corner so i'll be very interested to see like i can't imagine america's got talent would like want to keep terry cruz around unless yeah. that's the reason why they want to keep terry cruz around is because he's, he's saying news. positive yeah. things but um i could see people even if you're saying positive things about the show not wanting to watch a show because of your character and stuff. So um, what else made you go yikes? So Julianne Huff, who mm-hmm. actually, um, she also has been a, a, a judge for America's Got Talent, strangely enough. Mm-hmm. She um, she has like hopped on. She is like gone goop, but gone major goop. And she has started this whole new thing called Kinergy, which mm-hmm. is like kin as in family or kin aesthetics, where it's like this whole like healing dance bullshit also. okay <laughs> but like she how she's like been promoting it as when she's been doing like kind of like a stadium tour situation and mm-hmm. like been showing people like doing all these weird things and then like you know like pretty much like she's like scamming all these people to like do like weird movements and like making them pay like thousands of dollars for it and then also she's like telling people to like get like these exorcisms and like this video of her like getting like a, a spirit 
like a energy exorcism situation like went viral and just like watching her like writhe on a table as like this dude like pretends to like uh, not pretends i don't know it looks fake to me like it's like pulling oh he's pretending pulling uh, pulling energy and like she like pulls up and it it looks like it's he's pulling energy out of her booty so ridiculous (laughs) (laughs) wow so like to me it's just like it's just cringy to see you know these celebrities who are known for being fit and whatever, but also having like all the access to, in the world to being that way and to being like healthy and happy and like whatever good energy, like scamming. Dude, like, it's, it's scamming not even a people. scam. Like it's like we're living in an age now that those are the going to be the new religions. You got yeah, your it's Kanye's, like, it's you got your Justin Bieber's, you got your Julianne Huff's, whatever her name is. Um, these people are th- like so, what is it called? Like, into themselves yeah narcissistic Nar- you know they're they that they really are uh you know preying on people that will pay whatever money just to meet you in person in a room that like you'll definitely shake their hand because they're throwing you money and that's the way like this stuff starts like a cult or like some type of weird you know thing you know and it's just like it's weird it's really weird it's sad that people do that stuff it's like dude like you're a talented person like you know figure out other things to do besides like you know scam people so we'll see what ends up happening with that i can't see that going Mm. unless she becomes like the next scientology or something i see that kind of backfiring in her face but i know it's just like it's super bizarre and it's just even like her brother like her brother Derek huff had like commented being like oh it looks kind of weird but then like he's like you know supported her and whatever and what she's doing now and it's just like it just looks very bizarre um well why don't we talk about a mini main topic? Um, what are we thinking here? I for- completely forgot to ask you about it, but yeah, um, the one that's on the top right here. How to be friends with the the opposite sex without sex being on the table? Can you be friends after um, doing doing things <laughs> after with doing each the other? dirty? Does that make it easier or harder? Are all hetero guy slash gal friendships underlined with sexual tension um what a question (laughs) was it even a question i don't know but um you know so i think this is an interesting topic because um for many reasons but uh specifically because since being in atlanta i've you know have the most amount of girlfriends and like even like girls that i've known before have become better friends like you know being able to be single and stuff you know yeah um i think that's where it kind of starts with being friends um but before we even get there though if you're in a relationship like are you able to be friends with the opposite sex I think um is so. it acceptable i think so yeah yeah i mean i remember like this reminds me i mean I think it takes like if you're insecure, I'm going to use like my example of like if you're if you're if you're my male partner and you're insecure with me having male friends like or if you're if you don't want me having male friends, that means that you're insecure with where you're like where you're standing in my relationship. Like that also means that you don't trust me to like. But then that goes with like. All right. So then there's separate like uh like buckets for that so it's like you have your friends that you had he's been my friend before i even met i met you and stuff so you got to accept them yeah. but does that mean you can't make any more guy friends post to you getting in a relationship i feel like you is, can. That, is there a difference i feel like it's i f- i mean uh, this is actually funny i'm thinking of like one of our former guests taylor marie she said to me she's like yeah you know ever she's like once i started seriously dating ray I did lose some male friendships. And Mm -hmm. she's like, which says to me that some of those guys weren't looking to just be my friend. And I feel like that's, I feel like that's where it could be difficult where as like, I'm, I'm just speaking from my, no, that's that man. I think there's a lot of uh, truth in that. Like, you know, saying like the second, it's all fun and games until like you find out that the girl is like starting to date some guy. Then you just, I mean, I'm like guilty of it. Like, I'm like, Really? Like, you know, yeah. and, and you know, and a lot of the times it's because you're friends with them and you kind of know that this person is probably terrible, but like you just go for your type all the time and stuff and you're just going to like, it's just like, you know, and then you'll be in that like relationship or whatever. And a lot of the times like, yeah, the friendship falls on the wayside. Like maybe it goes into, is there like um, a sexual tension between guys and girls? I mean, it's not all the time, but I definitely think I mean, there is. I think there, I think there definitely is. I feel like um, I've had 
some guy friends where we were so close that I feel like we weren't sure you know, like, okay, like, are we just, like, really good friends? And I think that comes down to, like, even, like, how hetero girls and boys have been, like, socialized in the sense where, like, a lot of guys, I think, like, if you're a heterosexual guy and, like, you're getting the amount of, like, attention from uh, from a girl, which, like, I feel like girls will be, like, girls are, like, friendly and, like, talk about deep things and whatever, like, with their, like, with their girlfriends, like, friends of the same sex, like, right off the bat, or, like, they'll get close and, like, whatever, and, like, they'll uh, hold, like, they'll hold each other to do whatever, and I feel like when guys start experiencing that same kind of friendship, Mm -hmm. maybe, like, maybe not the, like, touch exactly, like, whatever part as much, but if they're experiencing that same kind of friendship, and then they realize that, like, that girl's not into them that's when they think like they're like oh well i'm being friend zoned and it's like well no like she's never you were never not you're always a friend like that's like where i feel like but this but there's a there's a always an opportunity at the beginning right like like fresh stages that it there's uh you don't know you don't know right there's like uh i guess i I mean, mean you could go into it everything being like it's a friendship but then like how will you ever find somebody you actually like? Because you can be friends with people that you like end up like being yeah. with and stuff. So it's yeah. like, you know, I think where I get into it, like it's like I definitely have girlfriends that like if they wanted to hook up, I would hook up at a second. Like they're just like, just tell me, you know, say like one of the times where I'm like, you're pretty and they just come over, you know, and that's how, you know. But like besides that, like, you know, I can keep it like just friends and stuff like, you know, it's like but you have to know that I'm going to be flirting with a whole bunch of girls like in front of you. So it's like, you know, that you start feeling out like what a friendship actually is between a guy and a girl like, you know, um, and there's differences. There's going to be differences from friendship to friendship friendship and stuff yeah um you know uh uh you know obviously me and you are friends and stuff and we're able to keep it you know platonic um (laughs) but uh indeed yeah but with it being like that though i think removing you know uh, it's very interesting, I think, being friends and removing the like um, the sex thing out of it, because like when it comes to like me and you sometimes like, you know, we're so close and stuff. But like, I feel like you're like, um, you know, we, we can easily get on each other's nerves a lot more because, you know, if you're like thinking you're going to hook up with someone, you're trying to like you're still trying to like play it nice because you, you right. want to like you want to grease the wheels. Right. And when it like when it comes to me and you, it's like, you know, I know me and you are friends. So it's like we can tell it like how we feel sometimes or whatever and yeah. it not be like really affect like, you know, I could go back and be like, dude, I was just having a bad day. I didn't mean to take that out on you. You don't really take that type of stuff out on people that like you think you're going to maybe hook up with. In the yeah, future. because like you don't want to you don't want to show that. You don't want to mess that up. Yeah. Until, yeah. Like, until you seal the deal. Yeah. Right. So like, you know, there's definitely i think the sex part of it um you know um what about people that have had sex and then have friends like and then like so the scenario you're talking about like um you know or we were talking about about a guy being like jealous and he was like i had this friend before like you can't but like does he have the right to be like have you hooked up with him and then and then you say yeah and then he'd be like i don't like that like what what would you say to a guy that did that to you I mean, his feelings can be valid, but like that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't mean it still goes back to the trust. Yeah. I mean, that just comes back to, yeah, I think that would go back to trust. Like I'm not saying like, I'm going to be able to police somebody's feelings. Like, yeah. Like have I hooked, like, has there been situations where you're like, oh, you're friends with whatever. Like, haven't you hooked up with them? I'm like, yeah, like once or whatever. And then it was never a thing again. And then if they're like still like, but like, how, why do you still hang out with them? That becomes like, that becomes a like trust of me because like, I obviously know like when I'm going to hang out with that guy or like with a group of guys or whatever, like my goal isn't to like, you know, hook up with him again. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's where, you know, I was like, man, one and done. Don't want to, yeah. um, that comes down to where then I feel like that's when guys start to be like, well, I don't. It's not you that I don't trust. It's him. And it's like, then, yeah, if that guy has other, like, ulterior but it, it's, motives. Well, yeah, it, it's it's like, it's not you that worry about. It's him. But for it to go, unless, like, the guy, like, raped a girl or anything, that it's both people. Like, you know what I'm saying? And being from, like, a position of, like, a friend 
to like I've told this story on here before like she ended up being my girlfriend but um that was probably like not a good idea after everything we'd been through but legit I was the friend but we had been hooking up like and like she had a boyfriend and the boyfriend like was like she she straight up was like if you're gonna date me you have to know that I have this friend Cy and he's like you know my my best friend and I was just like it was just like not good like you know what I'm saying so yeah. like you know it, it really the I'm not saying that I was like completely the bad guy here because I was a kid and stupid, but um, it's really on your significant other, like to to say or to be an honest person, whether they're going to, you know, actually be friends with someone or not. Um, But in most scenarios, you know, um, nowadays you see all the girls that are like, all my friends are gay. It was like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. Which There's I, actually a bad stereotype about girls like like I that. Have you seen her. the memes where it's like, uh, 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 like you have to understand like uh, I'm like only friends with guys. And I'm stuff. a guy's and then, girl. Yeah, and then there's like the hot dogs all over. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like I I just I'm not a big fan of girls who are like I'm a guy's girl. Like I like girls are so like girls are so annoying and girls are so catty. Like I feel like that's just like you're disrespecting yourself mm-hmm. because it's like okay so. Hmm. Why don't you have any female friends? What has caused you to not have any female friends? Like, what have you done? Oh, trust me. And if a girl's saying that, she thinks it's like I don't know why. Whenever a girl says that, she thinks it's like an attractive She's feature. She's like, I'm just like one of the guy. boys. Yeah. No, that's not like. I don't know. I've, I nowadays, like that, when I and girls still say it, and I'll be like, "That's All like right, a that's red like a, flag." That, yeah, that's a red flag because that means that they obviously have pushed female friendships mm-hmm. or were never able to cultivate female friendships in their life because of potentially like you know backstabbing they're usually then when they're the ones saying like they're like girls are so catty and like whatever they usually probably were the ones being catty or whatever to push people away and that's why they only have dude friends because then they're going around like on average with like, just the stories i know messing that's around with all the, the dudes yeah. like th- that's how they have all those guy yeah, friends usually it's the girl that's saying that is the one that's stolen like all your friends boyfriends oh yeah <laughs> yeah and then like it's like you or know hooked messed, up with them. yeah hooked up with like every one of and the she guys can't talk friend with friends group. because yeah. she she cheated on her friend like yeah. boyfriend so you know and and it, I, go, I, I think another thing like it goes back to like you know girls also like having like the gay guy friends like guy oh, girl yeah. girls and like straight girls and gay guys being able yeah. to be boy and f- girlfriends um because you've removed the sex out of it again like you know what yeah. i'm saying i think there's just like uh just like we're never gonna hook up so it's like you can just be yourself with people and stuff um i think like you know um i think that's like the key factor of like you know how someone's thinking about that on their end of a friendship like you know if it's completely and there could be like um you know different variations of it like a person like a girl could be like oh no no he's just my friend but still like give off like things that make her like you know want the attention from somebody you know or vice versa and stuff yeah. like you know um i know a lot of people that'll just like keep you on the hook just because like they like everyone their, likes attention everyone likes attention you like the feeling of being wanted mm-hmm. and like if you have somebody i know like i definitely had like in college there was definitely like a guy who was obsessed with me mm-hmm. and i you know didn't really see him as anything more than that but like because i was like in college and mm-hmm. i was young and i was like man but i like this attention like i'll like hang on i'll to, entertain it i'll entertain it yeah. for the time being and like you know then like disappear when it's time um but i guess like i was wondering do you think more guys go into you know um opposite sex friendships hoping for it to be more or do you think more girls go into opposite sex? I mean, I think, all right, well, Juan, so that's an interesting question. I think, um, do you think like, well, I think there's like men and women are different. Like, you know, it just is like, I mean, a guy could be like sexy to a woman, but like a girl is like sexy to a lot of men. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just is that okay. way, you know? Okay. I see what you're saying. And so when it comes to like a girl could really just like to have a lot of guys around her for the attention. A guy doesn't really like to keep girls around for attention. Like, you know, there's only so much like attention that you want before you're just like, I kind of want to just like, you know, be with you or hook up with you or something like that. But I, you know, there are guys out there that, um, I get like, kind of like interested in like seeing what they're, way they're thinking is that you know they are just you you see guys like all the time just friends with girls yeah my best friend ian has always has had mostly girlfriends and he's heterosexual and he 
dates and but like he's like one of my best friends and like we never dated right i mean i think that's just like inherently in you to be like no that's my friend i'm not even gonna try you know and i think that's a good way of doing it like you know if you meet as friends like it's gonna happen or it's not gonna happen you know to me i guess i'm more leaning into like um how much do we just put on like the girl making all the moves and stuff these days and, and everything that's kind of where i'm like you know, um, do do guys, can they step up anymore and like, you know, be proactive and try or is it just like the girl has to like kind of like set the, you know, the tone and when it's going to happen and stuff like. I feel like I don't. Because don't girls like also want like an assertive guy? Like Yeah, you know, they and, definitely do. I think there's, I think there's definitely the line between being like assertive and like, you know, being aggressive. Like, yeah. There's the, there's a difference. It's mm-hmm. like. Like, I feel like, and it comes down to, like, social cues. Can you read social cues? Can mm-hmm. you understand? Or, like, if you, maybe if you like someone and they, like, kind of are like, no, I'm not really feeling that with you. How, are like, it depends on how you respond. I feel like a lot of men will respond negatively where I feel like, like, they, they'll, like, you know, they'll be like, well, you were giving off all this and stuff where I feel like they'll, like, attack women in that sense where i feel like where women get rejected they just like i'm the worst thing ever like (laughs) um yeah yeah for sure i mean i think that's an ego thing with uh, like you know some men like you know for me it's it's more of like you know what are the reasons why a person is not wanting to hook up with you is it because they think of you as a friend they don't see you as that and or you know um uh you know it, it, it just really depends like it really depends on how you are with people like and you'll learn really fast like you know um and i think you have to be honest with yourself and the person that you're like friends with like you got to be like i like you and if the person's like i don't like you then you have a choice to make be like all right that's cool like i just like being friends with you or you just be like know that like i can't be friends with you because i'm always going to like you yep. you know so it's like i think it's just a matter of communication and being honest with yourself and the other person um you know i can be friends with girls like all the time but if i'd legit know that like like i like you and then being friends with you and then seeing you like flirt with other guys and stuff like that it's just like it kind of hurts me mm. then that tells me that i can't be friends with you you yeah. know um but there's different levels to it you know so there's levels I, to this you shit. just kind of have to um be uh self-aware of what level you're at with like somebody because you, it just like you know you could like somebody a little bit and still just be friends with them or you could like them a lot and it's impossible for you to be friends with them because you're just constantly thinking about them and like you know yeah, and wishing you yeah you know so and that's not healthy you know no. it's just like you know not everyone's meant to be in everyone's lives and be friends and stuff that's like something i'm realizing a lot more these mm, days same um even if you want it to be that way so um yeah i think i, I mean it's for sure possible for guys and girls to be friends it's just like you know um don't be creepy about it like you know don't and don't try to mess up a friendship either just like just yeah. to shoot your shot like you know um you can i think you can have like real conversations with people right yeah like just be like hey look like i think i might like kind of like you and um like how does that make you feel like or what does that mean for us like is there a possibility there or should i just like really just like suppress this and are you know can we be friends like you know is that a cool conversation to have i think that's like i wow if i got if i got approached like that by the guys that you know instead like try to weasel their way Mm. and like acted like they were friends and then like when maybe they had a couple of drinks in them started acting like a different way and then would get pissed if i was like why are you touching me yeah um i would have rather have had like that conversation instead of then having to have like the like the follow-up conversation that i've had plenty of times with people where i'm like hey like you you know us being out at that bar was a lot of fun but I didn't appreciate you grabbing my ass because mm-hmm. we're friends and like that's not how we roll mm-hmm. kind of deal. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like just in general, like telling people your truth and your feelings is going to be a way better thing than, you know, trying to go about it in a, a kind of non consensual way. Right. And I just don't like playing games in any situation no, I'm in no. these days. So it's just like, you know, if you're feeling a certain way, like, I've been getting a lot of like good uh, positive uh, reinforcement on just like people telling me like just be yourself like you know like um, if someone is into you they're going to like come uh, be attracted to you you're going to know like there's no forcing any of this like you know don't feel like there's something wrong with you like 
just try to be the best version of yourself every day and eventually you're going to attract like who like the person that's going to like everything about you like you know so um yeah if you kind of take the stance on that and just kind of like you said read social cues and stuff um that's probably your best bet so i thought that was an interesting mini main topic mini main. um you know let's move along to a bachelor this week um you know i don't want to go super heavy on it because not really crazy amount happened honestly but, no not a um, lot happened it was our fourth live watch which fourth went live watch. really well um you know i continue to Kicking watch it. the bachelor with us i think i might try to like um get into reddit a little bit and see if like you know um you know, somehow we can get into some type of forum or something where There's people are looking for a live bachelor There's feed, and, you know, but, um, yeah, so live watch is still happening. So if you guys are like, want somebody to watch with, make sure you're watching with us on Mondays. Yeah. Um, actually we probably won't do it this next Monday cause I'm, well, probably we can actually, um, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, this week, uh, we were very excited about, um, the chase rice drama that was going to be happening. Yes. Um, and it happened yes. and it so continues they, to happen. I actually got a little bit more info around it. Um, oh, I'm interested to hear. Yeah. So to, to preface, mm-hmm. they sent the girls to Cleveland, which they were initially not excited about but then after the producers fed them limes about how great cleveland was and they brought them to all the cool spots uh, yeah right in front of uh the one main street and in front of like the rock and roll <laughs> hall of fame mm-hmm. anywho I, I just found it hilarious as a midwestern i just it was like they're like they went to that stadium they're right? like oh hi all <laughs> um <laughs> but so first one on date was with victoria f um our little cat-eyed Ariana chica Grande they want to be yeah so in pure, you know, Peter fashion, he flew them on a little plane to Cedar Point and they got to spend the whole day at Cedar Point going on all the amusement park rides by themselves, which mm-hmm. I'm like, dope. And of course, she she's little miss. I'm so scared. I hate brains. And then like, she's like, totally fine. I'm like, what, bitch? Are you just putting on an act? Like, I don't get it. Yeah. And then, then the kicker was the private, which I don't think peter understands what the word private means because there is a crowd but (laughs) well i mean it's private but the producers had to fill that bitch up with fans so So they could tweet about it and get the word out about the bachelor i would say exclusive Mm. exclusive would be the right word exclusive concert yep and chase rice just so happens to be victoria f's ex well this is where i kind of wanted this The, the show made it seem like they're like exes but I read an interview uh, about Chase like you know he he says he was surprised like he wasn't this wasn't planned like you know they said it was going to be another random date but of course producers set it up to be Victoria F to go see her producers are nasty but apparently like they had spent just one night together and um, and she said that she was going to be going on The Bachelor so like he was, so it was a matter of like not like they really dated. I think they just hooked up one night <laughs> and um, maybe he liked her, but she was saying I was going on The Bachelor and I got to do this. And he was like, you know, so that's <laughs> kind of what The tea is scalding. Mm-hmm. The tea is scalding. So it was awkward as shit, cringy as hell. Like you could just tell like and she's trying to like, you know, figure out how she's going to unravel this mess. And um, eventually like, you know, you, it, it, to me, the biggest part was that like she should have came out with it right away because you know, like even though, as they're walking up, like as I got into yeah, the little like, platform, Peter, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have to let you know that like, I've, 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 I've dated this guy before and then he could just be like, and I don't want to go dance in front of him right now. And they could have ran off and done like another roller coaster ride. And I'm sure he would have been like way cooler with that, even though he was very cool about the situation and extremely shocked when she told him at dinner, <laughs> Chase. You mean the guy on the, the stage? stage? Wait a the second. singer? The guy Chase, playing the guitar? Chase singer? Chase Rice, the singer? Gu- no, the guy, that, the, the only singer? guy that had a microphone, like <laughs> on stage. The guy that we were dancing in front of. The guy named Chase Rice. Rice the, this the guy's hand I shook. I shook afterward and exchanged Instagram. He's with. like Chase Rice. Yeah, he's like Chase Rice. She's I like, just yes! talked to him. <laughs> yes. Yep, that, that all happened. That was the funniest thing. And then she runs I've away in a corner to cry. And Which he I honestly her feel and... like, it, yeah, especially if it was literally like that minimal, I feel mm-hmm. like she made it a bigger deal than it needed to be. True. But um, at the same time, like you're you're not in that vacuum and knowing like like all the pressure. Yeah, you almost feel like the cards are stacked against you because like true. you know like it's like what is happening right now? Are producers trying to get like like you know that they're starting up this drama? Oh yeah, you know and and she was already freaked out because she thought they were gonna do something based on the date card that they're gonna do something like heights related and she's like you know afraid of heights or whatever. Uh, eventually, you know, it, it, later on, I want to talk about why Victoria F. As much as I liked her last week, um. 
she kind of like went down a couple notches um, out later on um, in the show. But I do think that Victoria F would be a hot commodity on. Um, oh, she's Bachelor for sure going on Paradise. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so next up was the group date. They went to the Brown Stadium. They did. A football game, though, for some reason, Victoria P. can't play because her back is bothering her. No, that's like the excuse I wanted to give when we went paintballing the other like, day. Oh, my back I'm is- too pretty for this shit. That's like what she was trying she to say. She literally is like, she's like, I'm not putting on this shit. And like, I think my thing is like, so do they purposely send not like one person too many? We talked about this because then the teams were evenly split. Mm-hmm. So because they when they went on to like the cocktail party later they made a big deal about how it was like maybe, there's 13 maybe of them. Peter was supposed to play, play with them maybe yeah because they but were, if that was the case I think he would have been like all-time quarterback yeah because they were supposed to be like yeah there's 13 of them mm-hmm. so obviously it would have been 14 to be regardless seven seven. this is the beginning of of like like America seeing what I saw in Victoria P last week of yeah. how fake she was and she was the one putting on for the camera oh, yeah. as opposed to Alea and um this is the beginning of um I think the downfall like I'll be I'll, I'll say it right now I don't know how she can come back oh from she's this. I don't yeah I don't know and I don't know how she can, I mean so they go to the cocktail party mm-hmm. everyone's feeling some kind of way because nobody the, the game was tied so nobody got you know separate time there was all 13 of them together and in walks Alea. no before that victoria p takes takes p uh pilot p out and everyone's freaking out on her yeah because, because she got all that personal time with him when she was on the sidelines right. being a little bitch so she has her little time with peter and then comes in um the other girl i she think Simone, or she Ann. she Ann was like okay they actually <laughs> the other girls were nice and they were like they kind of like assisted she because Shan won all the points for the team mm-hmm. that was originally winning. And so, like, they're like, Shan, you you work the hardest. Like, right. we'll let you go talk to him. But as that's happening, um, they somehow hide Victoria P in, a, like, a, like a, a she confessional was like up, or something. Like, yeah, she was, like, upstairs doing a confessional And then Alea comes walking in, waves to the girls with a smile, and goes straight to Peter. And um, there was this awkward moment where, like, you know, Cheyenne, or Cheyenne was like, do you want to talk to her? And he's like, yeah, I'll talk to her and stuff. So... Um, pretty much Alea comes in being like, Hey, I just wanted to come to set the record straight about what was being said about me because like I've been completely honest with you about everything and I feel for her. Like she's pretty much saying everything except for the fact like because saying it will make you start looking a certain way, but like legit everybody's jealous of Alea. Like, you know what I'm saying? And she's going so like she she just wants to say it, be like, I don't know what to tell you, Peter. These girls are friggin' jealous of what like we have going on. Like I'm a very big personality. I yeah. you know, I, I am I'm confident and might like be outspoken or whatever like she's that. Got that. But stupid baby voice like Crystal though. I hate that shit. Dude, I love Alea. She's so awesome. I know you really do love her. I mean just because like sh- she's back you know what I'm saying? Like, out of all those girls that went on that group date, Alea comes in and gets the rose that she deserves. I think that's trash. No, I thought I it was that's perfect. Trash. I don't think I she think deserves it. I think what's trash is all those girls I that, think- like, talk shit about another girl for no reason just to chop her down and get another competition out of here. Like, that's not what this show is about. It's to find, it's like, the, the grimiest... No, it's it's not like legit what you should be doing to get like a to find love at the end of it. Like you don't come into the show and just try to sabotage other girls so it makes so there's no other girls left, so you're left at the end. Like that's not the way it should be. It's like the best girls for Peter are going to shine. And usually those girls the easiest one to get picked off is like the one that's not going to be confrontational. I think like, you know, uh Alea's been very good about not like, you know, being in like confrontational even when she's being confronted i feel like the only thing that she was confrontational about not really confrontational but like she made sure to insert herself was then the drama that starts between her and victoria f is because she inserted she made sure to be like oh you guys didn't know about this oh let me tell you about this oh i've known all of this i knew all of that no but like and i just feel like that was unnecessary and that was her like being like oh well i know all of this before even that though she like she pretty much makes it a situation where Victoria P lied yeah. about like how much yeah. they've been on. They went on vacation in Vegas. In too. They got pictures and she can't even defend herself. And no, Peter's she, starting to be like, and she just like tries to make it being like, well, I don't know what I, else I to say. She's like, oh, I just don't, I just can't believe you wouldn't trust me. Peter. And, and on top of that, it's like, you're like, this is the type of girl you want to be with someone that's going to be a friend denier just to like win a show and look like, Victoria P is the worst, dude. Oh, yeah, like, no, I Victoria swear. P is definitely, like, she is, like, queen manipulation right now. Because it's so fake. 
Like, she is definitely, like, I mean... Everything they were saying about Alea is Victoria P. And so, so in comes Alea, and now, like, everyone's getting back to the house or wherever they're staying. And is like, talking to a few of the girls that had her back because there was actually another blonde girl that was like, I heard Victoria P I talking it, shit like, in a confessional and coming out and being all, like, we're friends yeah, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think that was blah. Savannah. And so... Yeah, good for her because she's actually like a seed that's about to get watered and turn this whole thing to Victoria P because she's straight up being like Victoria P. Then why did you say that? And Victoria P can't say shit because she's a faker. And so Leia's out front talking to a couple of her girls and she's like, so catch me up on like what's going on. She's like, I already know about this. I know that, um, you know, Victoria F dated Chase Rice and blah, blah, blah. And then the girls were like, I didn't know that. She was like, oh. It's all I, over the internet. And yeah, they're like, like, we don't know about the internet. Well, it's not even that. That's like what me and you kind of got into a thing. I don't think it has anything to do with the internet. I'm talking about if if it, it's on the internet already, that must mean that a conversation has been had in the actual house. Not, I mean, not, not, but like, it doesn't have to be like in the house. It could have been like Victoria F to some people, like the producers and stuff are like, are also shooting different things out to different sources. Like they have direct connections to different things. Sure. But that's not going to stop me from thinking that no one knows shit in the house nobody like, has access to phones or tv or Veronica, anything stop fucking screaming because like straight up like it has nothing to do with phones or internet that they could found out that information well, one of the girls could have could have told them victoria yeah. f could have told one confidant in the house and then she told everybody well, in the house they could have yeah but so that's, that's all i'm trying to say it has nothing to do with internet or phones like okay but like they hadn't seen victoria f yet that's the thing is like they, with, she like, doesn't know that she doesn't know anything she's just saying is, like, shit that she knows but if you don't know she's that, not gonna not why come would in, you go in why would you go i would in do the same thing that shit? i'm just I saying i would do the same i would never do that because that's pot story i wouldn't give a shit i'm telling i don't give a shit about pot stirring at this point i came back in the house i'm gonna stir the pot because you bitches try to get me out the pot like you know what I'm saying i'm not going to do that like i will come in here and i think she still handled it that's why she went down a couple that's why victoria f went down a couple notches oh, yeah, with me because she's sitting there holding her with wine her, like, glass i know like with her lips stained i'm like girl how much wine have you been yeah drinking? and it's like dude you are not like even like when she's saying she, i still think alaya was like being honest she was like i wasn't sitting here spreading it around the house it was we saw the one conversation that happened. I they mean, didn't yeah. show another conversation of her and that's talking what, about that's it. That's what comes down to no, like, I just all feel the girls like, spreading shit well, too. Well, I just don't know why you look at it so negatively when I, I'm like, I'm well, looking at it very like, like, I just, sh- like that's the way it happened. Like well, I saw Well, I'm just it. saying, I don't think it was fair of Alea to come in assuming people would know anything. And I don't like, think she has she to knows... care about being fair because these girls are not being fair anyway. So why are you I talking mean, about that? Okay, well, I'm just saying like, just know, like, I think she... She like the way she said it and the way she approached it. I just said it exactly the way she, she said it. She's was, like, "All right, she, catch me up on the house. I already know that she's she dated like, oh, Chase well, Rice." I blah, already blah, know blah, blah, that. Blah. That's yeah. literally how she said it. Well, I already know that. No, yes, I, you, she you're did. taking out of context. I'm saying it exactly the way she said. It. She goes, "Guys, catch me up on." She's holding a bottle. She's swinging it like you know, wanting to catch up with the girls that are talking to her. And she's like, "What's happening in the house? I already know about this happening." She I definitely know this had that. attitude in how she said it. I yeah, would too. Then, I would too. She's back and she has nothing to fucking worry about because she has a rose. So I would be the same way. Okay. I'm just saying it has nothing to do with internet. It has I've, nothing to do with stirring the pot. She just talks I and mean, she's allowed to. Okay. So don't like sue her for it then. I'm not. But I'm not. she can she can do that. I'm not. I'm just saying she has to understand like what she's doing. Obviously all these girls are going to start talking and then then it becomes a whole other issue. In that it's moment like, she I didn't like have to I would, understand. I would be I feel like I would have been more strategic, but that's just me. I think she's going to be fine. I think that information alone like I, I I would be able to I mean, go up to she's Peter not and going be like, home. she's obviously staying. She has yeah, a rose. I would be able to go home to Peter and be like, I caught up with the girls and the girls are spinning this out of control. Like I'm, I'm I mean, yeah, I'm here for you, Peter. I'm not talking shit about anybody. Yeah. Like listen to like the drama they're trying to create out of nothing. I like, definitely don't. think. Okay. So you already knew about Chase Rice. Big deal. I don't care about it. I said it to some girls. So other people know. I'm sorry. I put it out there like that, but it wasn't like a malicious thing. Yeah. And, and I that's think easily that it, and the I think that comes down to also like obviously Victoria F was already had blown the whole like her dating Chase Rice thing out of proportion. So then like she just grabbed onto another reason right. to keep like that fire going. So because, I'm on like, the side of Alea like, because like all these other girls are being very dramatic and like and are just like trying to gang up on Alea and and twist the narrative to make it sound like she's a bad guy. And she hasn't done anything bad. Yeah. Anything. And, and what she said something that you, like about your stuff. It's not like I'm not allowed to talk here. Like I can say yeah. whatever I want. And if this is information, you guys, at least I have better stuff to talk about you than you do about me. So it's like, what, your best thing that you have against me now is that I'm talking to stuff about I mean, you? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, obviously she has, my thing is like, she has a leverage in that situation because she spent time. She has leverage because she's had 
enough time outside to yeah, like, just see wait till Alea gets her like one on one time with Peter yeah. and see how the game changes for the rest of. These I mean, girls. like I don't give a shit who Peter ends up with. I don't think Peter's all that, but like I just think like Victoria P better go home. We don't know yet, but like she obviously it lies. And she got caught in her lies and then tried to make Peter feel bad for catching her in her lies. My thing is, like, I think Peter is a pushover Mm -hmm. because he's been letting he's been letting all these girls run what's going on. Yeah, he's dumb. He let them like, you know, be like, that was a slap in the face. I can't believe you did this, which like I could see how they would feel that way. But like he's like letting them like run around like and he's letting them continue the drama i feel like hannah when she was the bachelorette and like the guys were doing their different drama and stuff Mm -hmm. that like kept continuing she kind of came in and like put her foot down and was like this is gonna end now this is how i'm gonna feel if you guys want it like she's like this is how i'm feeling we're talking these things out we're done with it and i feel like peter's like trying to do that but he's not executing the difference is there's, there's a happy medium between both peter and hannah the difference is in this situation is that um, Alea is not Luke P. Not even the oh, slightest. No. I know. Okay, they're different. So people. there's completely different situations. Except they're both being treated the same way by their the rest of the castmates. That's the similarity. And the difference between Peter and Hannah is the fact that Hannah did put her foot down when she shouldn't have, and Peter is not putting his foot down when he should have. Yeah. You know, so that's the differences in in, in that. And that's why I'm. it's not even like an underdog at this point. Like, Alea is not an underdog. She's like a, 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 a front runner that is being bullied by other people that that's all they got for them. And they're, they're going to spiral out of control in the next episode or two. You're going to see all the girls that are making their whole th- like career about snitching or about Alea. They're going to, you yeah. know, get she's back. And, like, at this point, all she has to do is just, like, continue being good and just, like, avoid, like, I know. you know, getting needs, into drama. That's my she... thing is, like, she needs to stop talking. Like, she needs to, like, really focus <laughs> on, like, talking. Like, she's cleared her air. Now I just need her to, like, talk just about herself. Yeah, and to Peter. Be like, you know, I'm not talking to you guys. Like, I'm here for Peter. Anytime yeah. I talk to you guys, you want to spin it out of control. So, yeah. um, And at least Kelsey had her one-on-one date, and she handled it well. And Peter was like, you know, Alea's back. And she, like, pretty much was like, hey, like this is your journey you gotta she's like i would hope that you would pick me like if i ended up being picked i would hope that you were picking me out of like all the options that you wanted to pick me out of yeah that was her being a politician like you know watch her spin out which is smart (laughs) oh smart for that but like the thing is is like you need to do that the whole time you have to be a politician the whole time i mean yeah obviously she's like i she's like she's had her allotted amount of drama kelsey has so she's like no i gotta just coast yeah she's like (laughs) like you know their focus is on like alaya and all these people right now i just need to like you know but she's probably gonna go home eventually i mean no i mean i think she's gonna get friend zoned their date was so boring yeah and then except for like her dropping like you know how she figured out that her parents were gonna divorce but besides that i'm like this is the most boring event like i didn't feel any connection Mm -hmm. i didn't feel anything so yeah i don't think she's lasting a long time um but yeah we don't we we got it to be continued um we got a Leia. Do you think Victoria P is going home? I would love to see her go home, but I think what you predicted during our live watch that they'd put them on. I mean, especially with how hard the producers have been working, I could see a Leia and Victoria P going on a two on one. I th- I could see a Leia. Uh, either that or Victoria F. Yeah. Or maybe the Victorias on a two a two on one Victoria date. I don't think that That'd would make crazy. sense. I don't think that would make sense. No. It you wouldn't. would it would need to be Alea with one of the Victorias, one of the Victorias. and that would make sense. I feel to like me. it'd be Victoria P over Victoria F, though. I mean, the shit between her and Victoria F isn't enough to yeah. warrant. Um. Also, um. So, uh, just to talk about other news and stuff, I sent you that uh, Instagram about Hannah, Hannah Ann being friends with. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Hannah or yeah. So so Hannah Ann is friends with Hannah G. Hannah Godwin from. Um, Colton season. They've been friends. Who's from, currently dating uh, who's Dylan? Dating Dylan Barber. Um, yeah. they've been friends for like a year or so because they met during modeling. And I actually have been reading different things that people sort of think that Hannah Ann is like an ABC plant. There's always one. I mean, yeah. So like, she definitely seems like she could be. I felt like Kaylin was like the plant from the last one. Yeah. Or even Hannah Brown. But like, yeah, Hannah Ann is definitely the plant. There's the there's they or and um. I feel like Luke P was a plant in the last oh, one. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? They always put like these ridiculously chariz- charismatic, beautiful people on there that are like, they're definitely going to be like at least the last two. Oh, yeah. And, um, but yeah, no, I mean, the, the weird part is, is that, um, that they, 
might have been around the same circles. If she's like hanging out with Han- the other Hannah, you know, unless they keep like Pilot Pete quarantined during his whole like prep to being the Bachelor, like I, they would have been around probably the same circles and stuff. Potentially, maybe. yeah. And so um, she's from I think Tennessee. Hannah Ann is so they've. I mean, so they're southeast. But if they girls, knew each other, I feel like they would have they um, probably already like, recognized it. Yeah. So that was this week. Um, you know, the reason why I was saying we might not do the live watches because I'm going to a wedding this weekend. In, we'll figure. Uh, New York. I, I mean, if anything, I'll just I'll do my tipsy talks. So, yeah. Um, I, I think it would be cool, but. Um, yeah, this week's, uh, slapper of the week. Um, this is a artist that we've played before. Um, Tyler Yahweh, yeah. he, he, um, had this song, uh, last year that we played. It was like, um, it was like, uh, told me that she really good at dancing Ten. like mm-hmm. Michael Jackson. Jackson. Um, Tyler Yahweh is actually from Orlando. Like he was yep. like a, an artist that like I've known. And then he like started being in Post Malone's camp and blew the hell up. This song has been a single of his for a while, but he just did a remix that, um, you know, has uh, Wiz Khalifa on it. And I found out that this is actually a, a sample from Green Day that he had to clear with uh, Billy Joel Armstrong of Green Day um, because it was a sample from their song Boulevard of Broken Dreams, I think. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, so I think he met him backstage at a concert and he was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to clear that. And he's actually in the video. So you got Post Malone, Wiz Khalifa, um, and Billy Joel Armstrong all in the video for this song. And the song's called High Right Now. It's the remix. And um, without further ado, let's just get into it, all right? Slapper of the week. This song slaps. <laughs> slapper. Yeah, slapper of the week. High right now by Tyler Yahweh featuring Wiz Khalifa. Um, yeah, man, that's a that's a jam right there. It is. I like. We've had like it was like sick beat, but still like kind of like somber Vibin'. somber tones. Right. I mean, that's that Green Day in there. Influence. And you heard like Wiz Khalifa kind of singing that melody in his mm-hmm. beginning of his verse. Um, do you have any shout outs, V? I wanted to shout out my brothers just because I love them. Vince, Frank, and Jack. And then I wanted to shout out uh, my friend Shroggy, Alex Shroggy. It's his birthday, the day that we are recording. What up, Shrogs? That's the homie right there. Um... Yeah, I got a couple shout outs. Um, I wanted to shout out my homie Mario. Um, it was his birthday this last week, and um, he also just started this um, new uh, like uh, healthcare app that I kind of wanted to shout out here. It's called uh, Moment MD. It's an app. Um, get it for your phone. Um, uh, when you get their app, it offers affordable, quality, round the clock care from local health providers for your whole family. So um, you know, uh, it's just, if it's try it in your cities, make sure to see if it's working there i know uh, i believe it's working here in atlanta and um in florida as well so um you know a lot of people as myself like you know um i don't really go to the doctors a lot i don't like to go um the whole process of going to the doctors is kind of just like out of date for me i don't want to go and waste time for an appointment that i made and sit in your uh lobby for like 20 minutes and filling out forms it's like dude it's the future send me whatever forms i need to fill out the night before or whatever so i can have that ready like just I want to be able to come in and then get my thing done and go. So this is the type of thing where, you know, it kind of helps you find, you know, maybe things you don't need to go to the doctor for or a whole bunch of other things. Check it out. See if it works for you. Moment MD available in the app store or anywhere you get your apps. Um, and shout out to Mario again. Um, and congratulations on the new business. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And then also I wanted to shout out um, my cousin Erica. She's getting married. Um this weekend um, the one that you're going to yeah this weekend i'm going to a wedding uh it's going to be on super bowl sunday which is i wonder if they even cared um that that was happening because like now you got to have like a tv somewhere in your oh, wedding yeah. um but i think they did it for the date because it's a sunday wedding and um it's a uh, february 2nd 2020 which is a great date to get married i guess but um you're definitely getting in the way of some people's tv watching that day I know. so um but yeah um, luckily for me i'm not a big uh, sports person so i can catch the commercials later um but yeah so i just wanted to shout out to erica and eddie i'm really excited to go spend time with the family um um, I think my sister's coming up. That's going to um, be awesome. She's going to be leaving my nephew Landon with um, my brother-in-law. So this will mm. be an interesting this weekend, be a I'm test. sure. Right. Um, you know, and then uh, my mom will be there and stuff. So I'm excited to see her. So shout out to all them. And um, congratulations, Erica and Eddie. I love you guys. 
So yeah, that's uh, kind of been my week. Um, kind of getting back to some normalcy. Hopefully after the weekend, um, yeah. you know, I got my place back and um, it should be a good weekend. What do you got in store? Anything fun? Um, I might be going to a beer fest. Might not. Haven't decided. Okay. Got a therapy appointment. Mm-hmm. Just uh, maybe doing some cleaning. Nothing. I was having a conversation with someone today, and yeah. they were telling me about how they go to therapy, and. Um, I've done like different things before, like our company, um, has like this like health and wellness type like deal where you can have like somebody call you whenever you need to and talk about, you know, how you're doing health wise, mind wise and all that stuff that I took advantage of for a while. But eventually it came to the point where like I was doing so well that like I had nothing really like to tell her. So where we kind of like stopped it for now, but um, she like this girl I was talking to today, she was talking about therapy and I was just like, you know, I just feel like really good right now. I guess like the only thing I'm confused about is like, um, how to like, like, like I'm starting to like wanting to be in a relationship, I think, but like also I don't like I, 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 and you know, I like, I like the fact that I'm single and can have girlfriends or, you know, meet random girls and all that yeah. different stuff. And I'm kind of like, I've done it for so long now that I'm kind of scared to get in a relationship like um, because I don't know what's going to do to my the social life that I've like built for myself. Like, you know, I'm not sure like how it all works anymore. And so I like I'm very confused in like, you know, in that sense. So that's like kind of like the only thing that's like, you know, got my mind kind of twisting. And she was like, you know, this is why I tell like I'm like a huge therapy person. She's like, you know, I think it's it'd be great. Like if you're feeling great right now, like that's a great time to start. therapy. Honestly, yeah, I don't feel I feel like you shouldn't just go to therapy like you shouldn't wait Mm-hmm. Like you should therapy shouldn't just be a reaction. I feel like it's all about like building tools for yourself. Yeah. Um, to help you work through different things. Cause like, yeah, I mean, if that's like, if your mind like you're, so then you're searching for different tools to understand and unpack like what that means for you and how you want to approach it and how like you want to act on it. And that's like what therapy is to me, like is to figure out like, okay, why am I acting the way that I am? And like, what can I do to, change those thoughts behaviors i think the reason why i would want to like look into it for me is because like those conversations like i was saying like i can have with you or i can have with whatever but necessarily i don't know if i'm getting um satisfactory answers or help from my friends like you know not the nothing like anything against you guys i'm just saying that there's other factors that play into maybe the advice that i'm getting from everyone and i don't feel like that's well, like, you know, I'm not getting sound advice. Like, I feel like that is like, like making me feel better. Well, yeah. And I feel like a therapist, honestly, like they're not going to give you advice per se. They're going to help you work through stuff. Because if you're saying that you're not getting the answers that you want, that's because like you need to actually just like figure stuff out but for yourself. But you might need like a lending a hand. Oh, I need to talk to somebody yeah, about it. Exactly. I, that's what I'm trying to say is yeah. that like it's not something I can necessarily work out by myself. I'm just trying to say that it's something that I used to be able to work out with like talking to a friend and stuff. But for some reason, just with the different places that people are in their lives and stuff like that, it just doesn't relate to me. Like, you know, it doesn't do like, you know, what you're going through right now in your relationship stuff. It's like you know, you have your way of looking at things right now. And for me, it's like, I'm not like really in that same situation. And I would be interested to navigate these waters with someone that doesn't know me or know about me and just kind of hear me and maybe think about like the things I'm saying, as opposed to like knowing me and how I am and trying to give me advice in that sense. Exactly. Yeah. They're going to give you tools to figure out like how to do stuff. That's the thing. I was like, therapists don't give advice. They Mm -hmm. give you like tools to do things to help you figure out why you do things. Well, I'm not even, when I say advice, I'm generalizing that I need, I need better tools than I'm getting right now. Like, you know, and, and it's like, it's helped me like along the way with a lot of different stuff. I just find this being like a section where like, I'm not really sure. Like I'm getting advice from a whole bunch of different people people Mm -hmm. and um you know tools or whatever you want to call it um you know that doesn't really feel like it's like really nailing you know the nail on the head like hitting the nail on the head yeah so um i get that yeah so i you know you bringing up therapy kind of like made me want to talk about me uh i think looking into it for uh, multiple reasons that's just one but you know i'm sure there's other things i could talk about that are um, you know a deeper 
thing. I think more men need to be comfortable with like wanting, like being okay with thinking about therapy. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely. I mean, it's still it's, stigmatized. If it's, it's it's if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, then you know, like like I said, like I didn't think I was a therapy type person because most of the time I felt like I could talk to somebody that I knew. Yeah. But nowadays it just feels like as I get older, um, you know, it used to be a lot more when we were all kind of in the same situation. My friends were all the same age. We're all going through the same things and you yeah, know all this stuff. But now it's not like that. Like I'm at an age where everyone's at these different levels of their life and it's like you know what might have might work for you and your path at this point is not kind of where i'm at and it's like doesn't really apply so um so yeah so you know uh that's something i want to talk about but besides that like you know i still think i'm doing good and stuff and you know just trying to stay um motivated to do things that um like make me feel better about myself, you know, and just being a better version every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, with all that being said, uh, going into this week, uh, weekend, I hope everyone is out there having a, a good weekend and, um, get to be with some friends and family, um, you know, uh, and just appreciate the ones that are around you, uh, a little bit more, um, or let them know, you know, that you appreciate them, that you love them. Uh, I love you, B. Love you too. Uh, and uh, I love you guys out there that listen and support us. So Same. Um, next week we got episode 98. So make sure you're with us. Um, this has been Future Bachelor. My name is Cy. I'm Veronica. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Deuces. Bye. Future Bachelor Podcast. Podcast.